KSAZ TV, this is Houston. Please call station for a voice check. Station, this is KSAZ TV. How do you hear me? We hear you loud and clear. Welcome aboard the International Space Station. Thanks. It's a pleasure. I cannot hear Scott and uh, and the and the guys aboard. Should I at this point? I don't hear them. I don't hear them. Yeah, we hear you loud and clear. Welcome aboard the International Space Station. There we go. Okay. You guys ready? Well, we're pleased to be joined by uh, three of the astronauts aboard the International Space Station. Captain Scott Kelly in the middle, his third flight. He launched aboard Soyuz in October. And Catherine Coleman, Colonel, third flight, launched aboard Soyuz in December, along with Paolo Nespoli, Italian in space, his third trip. And uh, guys, thank you so much for being with us. Well, you're welcome, and it's uh, great to be talking with you today. Scott, you're a veteran of this stuff, and uh, I know, Paolo, you and Catherine launched in December. How's it going so far, and how was the ride aboard uh, Soyuz? Well, uh, I've been here since October, and for me, it's uh, it's going great. It's really been a, uh, a wonderful experience so far, and the uh, Soyuz is a... Uh, incredible machine it's um, you know the ride to orbit is a little bit different than the space shuttle especially in the uh, you know space shuttle certainly gets your attention in first stage with the solid rocket motors but uh, you know the ride on the Soyuz after the uh, first stage is uh, is quite impressive and so for Catherine and Paolo uh, you both went up in December uh, how was it Catherine how was the ride and uh, be honest with me, when you hear Soyuz, do you feel like, uh-oh, I drew the short straw? <laughs> I will tell you that any ride to space is a, is a great ride to space, but I actually loved being in the Soyuz. It was sort of nice to be part of a, you know, in a way, a smaller crew, and you're in your small capsule orbiting the Earth for about two days before you dock with the space station. And I, I just loved being up there and just watching the Earth go by and having a little quiet time to really, you know, taken the fact that you're in space. Do you ever get used to the weightlessness, guys? I mean, it's got to be the most bizarre feeling, and, and to know you're going to be doing this for six months, it's not, uh, it's not an, you know, you've got to get used to it, and it's got to be terribly unnerving at a lot of points, and particularly when you're sleeping. Well, actually, I, I would say that uh, you get used to zero G pretty quickly, and it's a kind of exhilarating at the beginning because uh, things don't behave in the same way. You start losing stuff, and you look on the ground, and they are everywhere else. Uh, you try to move around, and you cannot walk. So once in a while, I push myself from the end of the laboratory all the way to the other end, and see if I can get there without ripping off things from the wall, touching into anything. And then not always it happens, by the way. But it gets it gets very interesting. I mean, it's, it's it's like, at least for me, it's like being a kid and rediscovering all these things and having fun. And and after a while, you actually realize that there are a lot of advantages. You, know, you can take big weights, big things, and carry them around like if they would weigh nothing. Uh, you need to be careful, of course, but it's, it's very nice, and I would think uh, everybody will love it. After a while, does it become normalcy? Uh, does it become a sense of normalcy that you're weightless? You know, uh, yeah, it becomes somewhat transparent, um, but every once in a while something will happen that will remind you that this is not a uh, normal environment for people to be living in, and, uh, you know, uh, you have to consider certain things. Uh, like you mentioned sleeping, you know, it's interesting, when on my first two flights it was very, very difficult for me to sleep on the space shuttle, but here, after a while, you get used to it, and I actually now, you know, sleep better here than I, I do on Earth. And uh, although it is somewhat odd to sleep while floating, and I, I look forward to a bed again, I do get better sleep here um, than, than I do at home. No kidding. Well, no pressure points. Let me ask Catherine if I can, because the women watching this, and this is going to sound terribly trite and stupid, but they're going to look at your hair and say, how do you have a good hair day in space? 
<laughs> Scott says like this and he's patting his head. <laughs> You know, um, I think every day in space, if your hair isn't really short, is probably a bad hair day. And you'd think it would get in the way, but actually it just kind of comes with you all the time. Although I do actually tie it up when the three of us are trying to be in one space, like we just finished doing some robotics in practice for when the Japanese supply ship arrives here later on this month. Get into the serious stuff in a minute, but Catherine, do you, the, yeah. well, okay, Scott, if you want to handle this. Um, the view. We just saw a picture of it before we brought you guys up. Does it ever get old? I mean, after a while, does it start to glaze over? And it's, you see it. I mean, you're circling every 90 minutes. Does, do you start to get used to it, or is it just unbelievably awe-inspiring? You know, it, it's somewhat like the, the microgravity environment where there are certain times that you kind of take it for granted, at least for me, since I've, you know, I've been here a little while. But then something, you'll see something or, you know, think of something or when you're looking out the window, you know, just have this moment that makes you really appreciate how uh, beautiful planet Earth is, how, you know, we're incredibly lucky we are to have it as, as our home, such a uh, incredibly looking place. So, so. I, uh, to be honest with you, at certain times, you do kind of, you know, th there have been days where I haven't even been able to look out the window while up here because I've been so busy. They're rare, but uh, it's it has happened. But, uh, and there are certain times when you just look out the window and you just can't believe how, uh, how beautiful Earth is and how fortunate and uh, privileged uh, we feel to be able to look at it from this vantage point. In something roughly the size of a five-bedroom house, so it's it's actually become pretty large as you've built on it and added onto it since 1998. Um, for you guys, is it kind of like Survivor? Are there conflicts and are there interpersonal battles that go on? Well. Um like I said, I've been here since October, and and with the two cosmonauts I've I've been here with, we've uh, we've gotten along very well. And and Katie and Paulo have been here uh, a little over almost three weeks, I think, tomorrow. And uh, so far, so good is all I have to say. And um, you know, if we were having battles, I probably wouldn't admit it on this uh, television station. Hey there, uh, Scott. I know you've got two kids, and uh, Paulo, you've got a daughter. You missed Christmas with them. How tough is it being away from family? You know, I have a 10-year-old, and uh, he looked at me when we talked about the launch date, and he said, are you sure you can't wait until after Christmas to launch, Mom? But then I think, uh, you know, we were so new up here, it was just uh, eight days after we'd arrived on orbit that I think the whole family was pretty excited and uh, to see me up here. And we actually got to have a family conference, a video conference, which we do once a week, but we got to have one on Christmas. And our my whole big family was there, so it was really pretty neat. Final thing, guys, this has been the most expensive venture for a single object ever built, $100 billion. Is it worth it for, for the world to, to invest this kind of money in this kind of project? You know, I, I personally think it is. I think, you know, uh, countries and, and past uh, civilizations that have continued to explore have, um, you know, continued to succeed. And, uh, you know, I think it's important for us as a nation and, and, and as an international community on board the, uh, you know, the people that participate and the countries that participate in the International Space Station to continue to develop our, our technology. And, uh, you know, the next frontier is outer space. And, and um, you know, I think it's important for us. I think, uh, you know, not only for eventually going uh, to Mars and, and other destinations in the solar system, but I think it's important to bring, you know, the technologies and the things we discover here back to people on planet Earth. Captain Kelly, Colonel uh, Coleman, and Palin Espoli, thank you so much for spending some time with us, and good luck up there, and believe it or not, we do think about you, even though you may think that we all forget about you, but we do from time to time, and best of luck to you, and thanks for spending some time with us. Good to see you. Well, we, uh, we really appreciate that. Thank you. And the station, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the event. Thank you. UK SAZ TV station, please stand by while we reconfigure video and audio comm.